Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree was a monster hit for the pop group Tony Orlando and Don. It appeared on their 1973 album entitled, Tune Weaving. In just three weeks, the song had sold three million copies in the US. It was written by the songwriting team Erwin Levine and L. Russell Brown. They initially offered the song to former Beatles drummer Ringo Starr, but his label allegedly called it garbage and turned it down. There has also been some confusion over what the song was really about. So what was the confusion? And why did the songwriters get sued over the lyrics? In this video, we will explore the answers to those questions and explain how the song inspired yellow ribbon movements around the world. This is the real story behind the song, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. Songs are like time stamps through your journey in life. They can remind you of exactly where you were, what you were doing, and who you were with. The good times that you want to remember, and the bad ones you'd rather forget. But every song has its own unique story that inspired the songwriter and moved him to share their experience with us. In this video, we will follow the songwriters on their journey and discover the real story behind the song. In 1973, the group Tony Orlando and Don released their biggest hit, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. The song reached number one on both the US and UK charts and remained at the top for four weeks. It sold three million copies in the US in just three weeks. The song was later included on their third album titled, Tuneweaving. And in 2021, nearly 50 years later, it was listed by Billboard as the 52nd biggest song of all time. Incidentally, Tony Orlando and Don went on to have 11 consecutive singles make the Hot 100 charts. The song was written by songwriters, Erwin Levine and L. Russell Brown. It tells the story of a man who's been away for three long years. He has only one concern. Will the woman he loves still want him after being away for such a long time? He sends her a message requesting that she tie a yellow ribbon around the oak tree if the answer was yes. If he didn't see the ribbon he would stay on the bus and simply move on. The very first line in the song reads, I'm coming home. I've done my time. This has caused many to assume the song is about an ex-convict returning home from prison. He just wanted to know if the woman in his life will still accept him after his criminal past. While it's true that the song was partly inspired by such a story, that wasn't the actual theme. Russell Brown said in a statement, This is not the story of a convict who had told his love to tie a ribbon to a tree. I know because I wrote the song. Anything about a criminal is pure fantasy. According to Brown, the idea of the song was inspired by a story he had read in Reader's Digest a year earlier. It was a reprinted article from the New York Post that was written by newspaper columnist Pete Hamill. In October 1971, Hamill wrote an article called, Going Home. The article told a slightly different version of the story. It was about a group of six college students on a bus headed to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. While on the bus, they make friends with an ex-convict who was on his way to Brunswick, Georgia. He had just been released after serving four years in a New York jail. However, he informed the students that he wasn't sure if he would be getting off the bus in Brunswick. He then explained that while he was incarcerated, he told his wife she could start a new life without him. Well he hadn't heard from her in over three years, so in his final letter, he gave her instructions. He said there's a big oak tree just as you come into town. If she still wanted him, she was to put a yellow handkerchief on the big oak tree. If he didn't see the handkerchief he would keep going. As they arrived in Brunswick, everyone on the bus could see there were many handkerchiefs tied to the tree. Brown said he thought to himself, that would make a great song. The next day, he went to see his songwriting partner Levine and suggested they turn the story into a song. The entire project was completed in just 15 minutes. They called the song, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree, and then registered for a copyright. But by then, Brown gave a slightly different version of how the song came about. 
he said that he heard the story while serving in the military. It was an old folk tale about a Civil War soldier. The soldier was a prisoner of war in Georgia. He was coming from Andersonville Prison and going home to Pennsylvania. He told his girl in a letter, I'll understand if I should stay on the stagecoach. But if I shouldn't, tie a big yellow handkerchief on the big oak tree outside of town. And then I'll know if I should get off. But I'll understand if you found someone else in the last three years. When they arrived in Pennsylvania, he couldn't bear to look at it himself. So he told the other people in the stagecoach and the driver to please look. When they got to the big oak tree, everybody yelled and screamed. The oak tree was covered with yellow handkerchiefs. Brown said they decided to use a ribbon in the song instead of a handkerchief. They also changed the stagecoach to a bus. Now we have two conflicting stories about the song's origin. One was an article Brown read in Reader's Digest about an ex-convict on a bus. The other was a story he heard while serving in the military about a Civil War soldier on a stagecoach. But why the change? Keep watching and it will start to make sense. Levine and Brown first offered the song to Apple Records, not to be confused with Apple Computer. The idea was to have former Beatles drummer Ringo Starr sing the song. However, Al Steckler of the Apple Records company turned them down. In fact, he reportedly told them that they should be ashamed of the song and he described it as ridiculous. They were also told to never show the song to anybody again. He then allegedly said, How dare you come and play me garbage like this about a ribbon in a tree? When you have something good to play, come back and see us. That's an interesting reaction coming from Mr. Steckler, especially since Ringo sang lead on the Beatles' classic hit, Yellow Submarine. Just look at these lyrics. Steckler could have made the same comment about this song as well. But since Apple Records turned it down, Brown and Levine had to find another artist to sing their song. They finally went to Hank Medress of Bell Records. He produced another song they wrote in 1970 called, Knock Three Times. It was sung by Don and became a number one single. But Don was not a real group. They used the voice of Tony Orlando along with various studio singers. Since Orlando was working for another music label, he wasn't able to record under his real name. Thus, the group was simply called Don to hide his identity. The name was randomly chosen because one of the producers had a daughter named Don, so they simply used that name for the studio group. They also used different people for the cover art. Even though Don was just a studio group, they later started touring as Don featuring Tony Orlando. Backup singers Telma Hopkins and Joyce Vincent Wilson played the role of Don during their live shows, but their voices weren't on the recordings. Interestingly, after a brief period of success, Bell Records had decided to dissolve the studio group Don due to declining sales. However, when Medress heard tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree, he called it a smash and wanted to use Tony Orlando for the vocals. It was also around this time that Medress and fellow producer Dave Appel made another major decision. They decided to turn Don into a real singing group. This would allow them to promote their new songs with real faces. Thus, Tony Orlando, Telma Hopkins and Joyce Vincent Wilson officially became Tony Orlando and Don. They were joined in the studio by Joyce's younger sister Pamela Vincent. But Pam didn't just sing background. She was also responsible for the song's vocal arrangements. Since Pam was committed to other projects, she wasn't able to appear on stage with Don. Yet she played a major role in the group's success behind the scenes. By 1972, all future albums featured the vocals of Hopkins and Wilson. Don was now an official singing group and Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree was released as a single in 1973. It quickly rose to the top of the charts. However, one person was not pleased with the song's success. That was Pete Hamill, the author of the New York Post story that was reprinted in Reader's Digest. He didn't believe that they got the idea from a story heard in the military. He then accused Brown and Levine of taking the story from his article and sued them for copyright infringement. Of course, it didn't help that Brown had previously claimed to have gotten the idea after reading Hamill's story and writing the song the next day. 
But while Brown initially said he read Hamill's article and came up with the song, there was a problem with Hamill's lawsuit. A team of lawyers hired by the songwriters consulted with Kenneth Goldstein, a folklorist at the University of Pennsylvania. Goldstein and one of his students researched the story and were able to locate several similar versions that predated Hamill's article. Their findings supported Brown's claim that he was already familiar with the story before the article was published. Reading Hamill's version could have simply given him more of an incentive to write a song about it. In addition, it was said that Hamill had based his article on a version of the story he'd once heard in a Greenwich Village bar called The Lion's Head. Apparently, this was a popular spot for writers to hang out in New York. Since Hamill could no longer claim that the story was his original idea, he wound up dropping his lawsuit. The song went on to win favorite pop rock single at the first annual American Music Awards in 1974. It also received Grammy nominations for Song of the Year and Best Pop Group Performance. After their Grammy performance, Fred Silverman at CBS gave the group a summer variety series called Tony Orlando and Don. The show stayed on the air for three seasons. It's said that the show was inspired by the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour. The song also created a resurgence in the yellow ribbon movement. Displaying yellow ribbons while waiting for someone to return is said to date back to the 19th century. But after the release of Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree, the practice became even more popular. This was especially evident in the 1970s during the Vietnam War. It was 1973. The war had just ended, and the prisoners of war were being released. Those returning veterans could easily relate to this new song about a captured soldier who was now going home. This song was their story, and they embraced it. In addition, the song had a powerful effect on their loved ones back home. Returning soldiers were greeted with yellow ribbons tied around trees. Tony Orlando continues to sing Tie a Yellow Ribbon at the annual homecoming reunion of the Vietnam Prisoners of War. He credits comedian Bob Hope for encouraging him to use the song as a theme for the returning soldiers. 2023 marks the 50th year of that event. It's also the 50th anniversary of Tie a Yellow Ribbon. In 1979, the yellow ribbon became a popular symbol of hope during the Iranian hostage crises. One person who used the song for inspiration was Penelope Langan. Her husband was one of the 52 hostages in Iran. She suggested that people tie a yellow ribbon around a tree until the hostages were home. It became a very successful nationwide campaign. Yellow ribbons were also used in the Philippines in 1983. Supporters of the exiled politician Benigno Aquino tied yellow ribbons on trees in support of his return. Aquino also wore a yellow ribbon in public. When he died, yellow ribbons were once again displayed around the country. Over the years, many other causes have adopted ribbons as symbols of hope. No doubt Brown and Levine were glad they didn't follow the advice of naysayers and give up on their project. And they weren't the only ones. Here is Telma Hopkins, Joyce Vincent and Tony Orlando at the American Music Awards in 1974. We would like to thank our producers Hank Metris and Dave Apple. And we would like to thank our writers Erwin Levine and Larry Brown for Tie Yellow Ribbon. I'd like to thank the American public, I'd like to thank Bell Records, and I accept this award for my idol in memory of Bobby Darren. Thanks to everyone involved, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree has become one of the most successful songs from the 1970s. And even now, decades later, its inspirational message is still very much a part of our lives. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Our weekly videos will feature such topics as stupid crime stories, classic TV, and the real stories behind popular songs from the past and present. There will be even more categories as we continue to grow.